Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Pain, Pleasure and My Will Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Pain, Pleasure and My Will. Recorded on the 26th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay. Well, we've got... What we're going to try to do, actually, is probably do this in 40 minutes if we can, because <laughs> I'm already quite, quite late. So. Um, so here's your opportunity to ask about pain, pleasure and the use of your will, Q&A. That's our, that's our session now. And I've put a little diagram, or if you could call it that, just a few words on the board, so that you can see what leads to pain as a reminder. Yeah. So, even, like, I feel we're, we're going to say a lot of things to you about sin, obviously, in the future. There's 60 hours presentation, presentation 30 hours about understanding sin, and 30 hours about how to actually remove it from our, from our life and from our soul. And, um, but a lot of it depends upon you understanding some very basic principles that it, that it is the cause of pain. And it is, and long-term sin is cause of suffering. Because, because if, if you don't understand that very basic principle, it's highly unlikely you'll be motivated to remove it. Yeah. All right, what would you like to ask? Anything that you can think of? Or you're all just flabbergasted? <laughs> <laughs> flabbergasted by it. If we come down to Alan first, and then across to Kate on this side. If you leave your hand up, Kate, so... Cheryl can see you. What's the, what's the place of things like surgery and stuff like that in this whole process? Because, you know, maybe they have a kind of a motivation and maybe it's compassion for people, but as far as the people... Well, you can see straight away that there are some things that we do in our society that probably will slowly dissipate, won't they, and completely disappear in the end if we actually had God's view of matters. And obviously surgery um, in the end might only be because of people having accidents or people who have, you know, in the stage between being um, learners and not being perfect yet, right? And, and so my feelings are that the loving way to use surgery is if the person is willing to address the cause of the problem within themselves, which is a part of what they need to learn as a part of their recovery, then surgery would be appropriate to help them with some kind of issue, whatever the issue is, whether it be an accident or, or some kind of event that occurred or, or some kind of disease that through the process of what's happened has been created. Um, surgery is appropriate under those circumstances because the person wants to address its cause, right? But if a person does not wish to address its cause, then we've got to question whether they really have a sincere attitude about solving the particular problem and, and, and actually resolving the issue. Now, now to a degree, um, surgeons are already seeing this particular thing with regard to things like cancers, and particular lung cancer related to smoking, for example. A lot of surgeons now feel that they should not operate on a person who, who is, is made a choice to remain a smoker um, with regard to having lung cancer, for example. So a lot of people feel that that's unethical to, to actually use all of everybody else's resources, because remember, a lot of our, uh, our, our medical system is paid for by other people's dollars, and to use all of these medical resources that other people have paid for to, to solve a problem that somebody has when that person has an intention to keep doing what they desire to do, that seems very, very unloving action, isn't it? And you wouldn't support those particular actions. So there's loving use of surgery and an unloving use of surgery. And we can easily see, usually, what the difference is between those two states, actually. And is, the, is it also an aspect of God's mercy that 
Of course, it's an aspect of mercy, but it's also an aspect of justice. So you've got to balance the two. So, so, so yes, uh, it's merciful to offer somebody a way out of their situation, always. But, but it's not merciful if all they're going to do is go back to exactly the same situation, is it? All, all they're doing is re-causing the problem again, over and over again. It's a bit like a, a wife who's, who's removed from a situation where she's in a battered home or something, you know, where, where she's with a violent man, and she just decides to leave the home and go back to the violent man. What can you do to help that particular person if you've already educated her? So, so there's education that has to occur and a number of other things. I feel every single uh, physical illness and emotional illness there needs to be a, a portion of it where education is, a, is, a, is actually mandatory. <laughs> so the surgeon themselves, would they be a mixture of um, positive, uh, you know, using their will positively and using their will negatively because they may be trying to avoid... Well, in today's fearing. society, yes. A lot of surgeons are using their will to avoid their own fear of death. And, and also other people's fear of death. Uh, but a lot of surgeons are responding directly to your avoidance of the fear of death and, a lot, and your avoidance of your own emotional issues. Like surgeons, uh, well, and let's put it at the medical industry as a whole, has huge amounts of demands on it at this stage to avoid emotional processing. Right, so, so all of these collective groups of people are just a reflection of our own avoidance of emotion in the end. So if you get enough people on earth no longer avoiding emotion and no longer choosing to and they demonstrate through their actions that they've healed diseases and so forth, in the end everyone on earth will know actually if you deal with this particular emotion then breast cancer on the right hand side will, will be gone. Right? If you deal with this particular emotion, bowel cancer will be gone. If you deal with this particular emotion, heart disease will be gone. Because every single disease has a specific emotional injury related to it. Now, if, if most of the people on earth knew that, then surgeons would only be responding, or the medical profession would only be responding to instances where people are in transition between dealing with things, and deciding to deal with things, and having not dealt with them yet. Does that make sense? which would be a lot more loving. Thanks. <coughs> um, anyone else? Okay, that's right. Sorry. Um, I just got a bit confused earlier when you were talking to Mia about guilt and with her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and you were just saying, like, guilt never changes the behaviour. No. So... I've never seen anybody who's felt guilt who's ever changed their long-term behaviour. Can it help motivate you? I've just no. I've just found that was well, an unloving motivation. Oh, okay. It's not going to motivate you either. So seeing what if you have done something wrong, like because sometimes you can be guilt, feel guilt when you haven't, I suppose. But no, there's a difference between guilt and repentance. Right. Yeah, I think I'm maybe because yeah. I've found that sometimes a person who feels guilt very rarely feels repentance. So, but I, I guess I thought that guilt could be the first step of repentance, like no. when you actually realise, yes, I did something wrong, I feel bad about it. Yeah, well, no, right. that's the first step of repentance. Right, so it's... it's guilt is where you have a tendency to punish yourself or feel bad about yourself without wanting to address the reason why you did something. A person who's repentant always wants to find the reason why they did it. A person who feels guilt does have no intention of finding the reason why they just did what they did. They have no intention of feeling it or finding out the reason why. You I'm just, yeah, I, I thought like a FAQ that you guys did and you were talking about like the judge and the verdict and how he doesn't have judgment about it. He just says, yes, you're guilty, you did it. Yeah, you did it. Like yeah. that, that's... Is but that a person who feels the feeling of guilt mm. doesn't even want to know that it was a choice of something they did and want to know the reason why they did it. Okay. And again, you're using something out of context, Kate, similar oh, to what yeah. uh, somebody over here was doing earlier, Louise. You, you're trying to, you're, you're using the word guilt in two completely separate contexts. Yeah. That's in this stage, I'm using the word guilt in terms of personal guilt that you feel when you've taken action that's harmed someone else. 
I'm saying to you that guilt, unless you have a desire to repent, which and the first step of that is trying to find out the reason why you did the particular thing and feel about that, unless you have that desire, the guilt is useless. It does nothing. Does that make sense? And in fact, it's a sin. But if you're just like a judge to yourself, I mean, not with judgment, but you just say, yes, I did that, that was a sin, and then you start to... Like completely about different now that's drove, the first right? step of repentance oh, okay. which yeah. is a very different subject okay yep. yeah no worries and we'll be talking a lot about the laws involving repentance when we talk about removing sin yes obviously yep thank you thanks alan and then catherine over the side if we have catherine down here sorry sorry cheryl you don't know who everyone is. um if a man or a woman wants to improve their physical condition like cosmetic surgery breast implants makeup yep whatever yep um to get more pleasure from people seeing that they're they think they become more beautiful or yep. something is that a sin or the start of yep. sin yep it, it is yep because there's an addiction there of course it? okay it's driven by only by addiction it's also driven by an addiction to avoid your actual true state Right. So if I went and bought a wig and I wanted to have hair for a change, yep. would that be a sin? Wouldn't you be better working through the emotion that causes the loss of it? Because then you probably that. grow it, right? <laughs> then, you, then you grow it back, right? Like I'm losing some hair on the front here. I've noticed, yeah. yeah. You, and and <laughs> <laughs> well, you, look Peace, me brother. Peace, <laughs> you look at me for 30 hours, of course you're going to notice things. <laughs> well, I, well, hopefully you're going to notice things. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> anyway, but, but I, you know, I can feel what it's all about. It's my resistance to the emotion of worth and, uh, and my addressing that particular issue. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and there's a lot, at the moment, I have a lot of grief all locked up in my head in particular. So the rest of my body's looking pretty good at the moment. And my head is <laughs> like paying the penalty of all of this lack of worth and, and grief that, that, that stored up there. You follow? Yeah, so I thought it was around worth when it comes down to hair loss. It's um, like losing a bit of your identity or, or something, you know. Yeah, there's, there's a number of issues that, that affect hair loss, but yes, yeah, a lot of it's to do with worth. It's interesting that m women have a lot less problem with becoming bald than men, which is an indication that most women have a fairly good opinion of themselves, which is interesting. You, th you think you have a bad opinion of yourself, but actually many of you have a much better opinion of yourself than what the men you're with have of themselves. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, thanks, Robert. Uh, it seems to me the things you've listed up there about sin are completely connected to like avoidance of truth, of God's truth. Yeah, That's big relationship, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's, yeah. And also we choose these things for a lot of reasons. If you, if you examine each one of these things that we're choosing to do, obviously um, there's obviously issues with regard to our belief systems that are out of harmony with truth. So, so there's obviously an issue with truth, God's truth here we're talking about. There's obviously a, a unwillingness in some cases to take some kind of action Right, so there's a resistance to action there. There's obviously also a deep resistance to emotion, because sin itself is driven by our emotional conditions. So you can see how emotion interplays with all of that. And you can see also that the majority of us don't have a belief that, that releasing sin is a good thing for us. We, we actually feel that acting in sin is a good thing. That's when we get joy and that's when we get satisfaction and that's when we get the things we want, right? And so that's an indication that we don't have much faith in God's way at all. So you can see there's a relationship between the previous two days' discussions and this issue of pain and pleasure and measuring what is the cause of pain and pleasure. Mm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, good point, Rob. Uh, Catherine. <coughs> um, I was just wondering... Um with my pain caused by the polymyalgia, mm -hmm. now when I... Do you want to describe what polymyalgia is for people po to understand? Poly is many, my muscle, mm -hmm. algae pain and rheumatic is the type of pain. Yes, so there's pain in the muscles all the time. 
Yes, yep. and it also affects the ligaments and tendons. Yes, too. it makes them feel under stress all the time and makes them feel painful to move and so forth. Yes, mm. yes. Now, I know why I have it. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was wondering was... Do you want to explain why? So oh, it, uh, it was put there by my parents. Yeah. Uh, because um, of the way they treated me and I believe and still do believe the way they treated me um, that you deserved it that I deserved it mm. and I believe it's all my fault mm -hmm. and I'm to blame yeah 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 um, so there's a desire to avoid the truth there isn't there of, that it's not all your fault yes and that you're not to blame yes yeah now, what I was wondering, um, I quite But can often I also say, uh, Catherine, there is a link to that and fear as well. Yes, there is which fear. Which you obviously understand. Yes. In the ligaments and joints are a lot about pain and ligaments and joints are a lot about fear and not wanting to feel fear. Yes. Which you've started doing, so that's really good. Yes. So you're taking action. Yes. Which is really good. But, yeah, what, what I wanted Sorry. to know... Sorry, fire away. <laughs> ...was... I um, process, or I think I process some of this emotion, mm -hmm. and the pain, it doesn't disappear, but mm -hmm. it abates quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But When you say it abates, can you explain? Like, you, well, it's like nowhere near as intense? It's nowhere near as intense, right. yes. Yes. So you know you're on the right track. Yeah, but the trouble is... <laughs> that after a short period, you know, it might only be a day or something like this, yeah. the intensity comes back again. Yep. So I assume that I'm just telling myself I'm doing something and it's disappeared, but I, I don't know. I, I, I just wondered why, if i am processed it and the pain um, dissipates, well, Why in, or maybe it's maybe it might stay away for three or four days, mm -hmm. and then it will come back. Mm -hmm. Well, you know from your experience with fear, don't you, that that certain, like for example, all these heart problems you were having yes. with your fear, yeah, and you were very concerned that you were going to die from that, right? Yes, well, I still could. Yeah. Yeah, and and but and that even caused you to believe that you couldn't process fear. You had to be careful, and you'd be better off going and get an operation and all those kind of yes. things, which you ended up deciding to not do. That's right. Yep, yeah. and and well, I was frightened of that too. Yes, I because mean, the operation they were going to give me. I mean, pretty intense operation. Die on the table, and they. 2% die within the next little while. So, yeah. I mean, there was fear from not having it as well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's right. So, so you decided to take the less intrusive approach, which was to address right. some fear-based emotion. Yes, and I wouldn't take any drugs either. No, I that's right. I wouldn't take any drugs right from the beginning. Yeah. So, in the process of doing that, what did you find? That my fear, yeah, started to go away a bit. Your fear started to go away because you were processing your fear, and uh, and also you had less of these events occur yes, with regard right. to your heart. Yes. And in fact, now you have very few of them. Yes. In comparison. But it's still damaged. It's still damaged, but it can repair. Well, can the valves repair? Yeah, everything can repair in your body. Right. On. So everything can repair. <laughs> But that's obviously a faith issue you have. Yes. Because you don't believe that. You think the damage is done. And it's not true. But, but the reality is you, you repair something there. So you've got an example where you dealt with fear and your heart now is not going through the same stresses that it had before and you're feeling a lot better in that regard. You sometimes still wake up afraid, but you very rapidly get into the fear and, and therefore have the rapid alleviation of the instant pain. Yes. Right. That's the example that you've got. So you know that's built your faith. So now you're attacking this issue of the what's it called? The myalgia. Yeah, polymyalgia. Polyomyalgia. All right. So so the question then becomes, well, why isn't that alleviating? Well, you know that it is alleviating sometimes, but it seems to come back a few days later. Yes. Yes. And it's because the actual underlying causal emotion is going to take, for a, for a start, some time to address. Considering well, it's been there for 70 years. It's so. been there 70 years. It also, you were treated systematically badly 
over a long period of time in your childhood yes by both parents yes sexually abused by dad physically abused by mum yes so so the, and these are obvious you know issues where you obviously now feel to a degree that and they taught you that it was all your fault in this yes. process they told you that in fact yes i know <coughs> mm. i'm just uh, saying all these things for oh, other sorry. people's benefit <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know. <laughs> but none of them know what is going on, so you've got to let them know. Okay, so, so the reality is you, you are using your will to, to you've become a, a little bit more sensitive to what's going on. Now, the question though is what is the sin? Because a lot of this is about, remember, pain is caused by sin, so what's the sin? The sin is not wishing, w willing to feel. No, 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 you're willing to feel. Well, not willing. And that's helping. So that so you're not sinning by not by choosing to not feel because you are willing to feel. Well, not willing to feel really what my parents did to me. No, you're willing to do that too. I've observed you willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why are you saying that you're doing things that you're not doing? I, like I, I don't understand that either. You've got to accurately assess what's going on. You are willing to feel. I've observed you willing to feel. Yes. So you're willing to feel. Um, I've observed you willing to, uh, you know, see the issue with your mum and dad. You're willing to state the truth about the mum and dad issue. You are. Yes. So, so you're willing to do that. You're also willing to process through fear. Well, I've seen you do that. So you're willing to do those things. And if, that, if nothing is changing, then that tells you what? That and those particular things it. can't be the main cause. Oh, right. Oh, so there's another cause. What's the main cause? <laughs> you, you identified the main cause. You told me it. What was the main cause? Of what my parents did to me. No. You said the main cause involved more than that. It was what? How you feel about yourself as a result of what your parents did to you. Right, it? I'm not willing to feel how I feel about myself. Yeah, you're still wanting to feel that it is your fault. You still do feel it is your fault. Yes. You still want to. Yes. So, so this is where the sin is. It's lack of love of self. You're still wanting to feel it was your fault when it's not. You follow me? Yes. But it's inside me, so... Yeah. It's a feeling inside of you that has to come out of you, that it is your fault. Right. So how are you going to feel a feeling inside of you that it is your fault? Are you asking me that? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's your feeling. I <laughs> um, well, I've got to say that... Um, well, God doesn't think it's my fault. Good. So that's a good start, isn't it? We had to remember a couple of days ago, we had to tell ourselves God's truth. So God doesn't feel it's my fault. So what is God's feelings? So I'm now looking at what God's feelings are. It's not my fault. So, no. that, so let's put that down. That's God's feelings. And remember, all of God's feelings are truth. So it's God's truth. It's not my fault. Yes. Now, now, is that strictly true? If I'm choosing to hold on to a belief that says I'm not a good person or, you know, it's my fault, then is it strictly true that it's m not my fault? No, it is my fault. Well, what's, what's your fault? Let's be more specific. I'm hanging on to it. You want to hang on to it? Yes. Yes. That is, that is the thing that's the sin. You want to hang on to it. Yes. Right. Why would you want to hang on to it? What... what I don't want to believe that I'm that I'm one of God's greatest creations. Why don't you want to believe that? Why wouldn't a person want to believe that? There's got to be a reason, isn't there? There's not. There's never no reason. Because I'd rather believe what my parents told me, I suppose. Why is that? See, this well, is an issue I'm... It's stupid, I'm, isn't it, wanting to believe what they said? Well, it they? is, but it's the same issue I'm working through myself in, in many cases with regard to my worth. Why do, why do we want to accept what other people have said to us rather than, rather than accept God's truth from God? 
about the issue. There's got to be reasons inside of us emotionally, isn't there? So what I'm suggesting is to investigate those reasons because they are the reasons why you go back to the same opinion. You follow me? Yes. And those, those reasons are not anything you've already addressed because if they were, it would already be... It would be gone. It would already be either gone or being lessened quite, quite significantly. Yes. Right? So just like it was with your fear, once you addressed... And what was it with the fear? Remember, initially you were telling yourself you're really afraid and you couldn't feel it and, and I had to convince you <laughs> through some reasoning that actually, no, you're capable of feeling fear even though you're worried about w your heart and what might happen to your yes. heart. And I said, actually, it's going to help your heart. <laughs> and, and you didn't believe that for a while and then and after a while that changed. And then, and then we started talking about wh why you're afraid and you said, oh, well, you know... I, you, you were kept attracting, attracting spirits overcloaking you when you were terrified, right? Yes. And they caused your heart to go into that, to what's it called again? AF. AF, yep. Uh, let's be more specific. Atrial fibrillation. Good, eh? So, so, so it went into atrial fi fib fibrillation and you, you, you felt that, you know, every time, every time you got really, really scared, you were afraid of going into that place. Mm -hmm. But then after a That's while... That's where I went. You did, yes. And then, and then after a while we talked about the fact that you were letting these spirits overtake your body. Remember we talked yes. about that. And, and in the end it worked out, we discussed how, how you were letting them overtake your body because you wanted to get out of your body when it was in that place. Yes. So we, sta we talked about you staying in your body, getting out of your body. That's a sin, right? So stay in your body, stay in your body. Every time you stayed in your body, not a problem anymore. That's right. It just disappeared completely. The spirit influence over your body, gone. Mm, it that. still sometimes comes back. No, because you try to get out of your body and you know that. Yes. And so, so, <laughs> so you always come back to your body and bang, it's gone, dug on, everything's good. Yes. Right? So, so you know it's the same problem, so, but there's a reason why you're trying to get out of your body still that still exists. Right? I don't want to feel what's happening. Not, not about the situation, I'm saying the reason from your childhood regarding getting out of your body and why you get out of your body, that's still not addressed. Right? This is why the AF still sometimes happens. Yes. Because you, you still haven't addressed the reason why you want to jump out of yourself all the time. Right? And, and this other issue is similar to that in the sense that you've dealt with some of it, you know that there's some issues here, but, but there's a whole series of areas where you're still, in God's perspective, sinning in the sense of the way you see yourself. Yes. And you don't want to change that, those particular things. You don't, want to, you don't want to release the emotion that causes those particular beliefs. Yes. Yeah? So the key is to allow yourself to work through what those particular beliefs are, become aware of them, and then allow yourself to feel them. Does that make sense? And unless yes. you do that, the problem will continue. Just, but, but it will lessen because you're already dealing with, you, you're lessening because you know you can feel your emotion. You're trying to accept God's truth regarding your parents and how they've treated you and so forth. So you are taking action. That's why it is reducing but it's not going to disappear until you address the basic core issue, which is how you see yourself. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Does that make sense? Thank you. Many of us have a refusal to see ourselves truthfully because, because of the pain that will cause us to feel about how others have treated us. Does that make sense? Like the pain that others, uh, that others have treated us in a completely different way it gets triggered once we start to see ourselves truthfully. So there's all sorts of reasons why we may avoid those particular situations. But I feel you know from past experience that it works, so all you've got to do is find the right thing. Does that make sense? So whenever I'm not progressing or I'm not finding the cause of some personal pain, I go, okay, it wasn't that thing. <laughs> I've sincerely felt my way through that and the result... Sometimes I've had... Things like, I sincerely feel my way through something thinking that it's related to this particular thing, but it gets rid of that particular thing, but this particular <laughs> thing's still there. They go, oh, well, my guess there was wrong, wasn't it? Like, there's got to be some other reason why that particular thing is occurring, right? And what I've found is that we are quite addicted to reinforcing negative beliefs about oneself. And some of the hardest emotions I've ever had to deal with are attitudes I've had towards myself. 
Of course, that's not going to be the case for a person who's basically been taught by their children that they are wonderful and beautiful and lovely and everything's right. They're going to have the opposite problem, how they've treated others. Yeah. So it just depends on what kind of injuries are there as to what is the sin, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, let's go to Fab. Thank you. <coughs> um, my question's about the fact of the my last two years i've been in suffering basically like my life's been i've been suffering about some events that i did in my physically or emotionally or what emotionally suffering. emotionally yep and now it's starting to affect me physically yeah and um and my problem is, is like i have i've had experiences with faith and i've had experiences with feeling intense emotion and it has sort of alleviated issues and i've had feelings of pleasure from it mm -hmm. but you know, obviously you've been telling me since we met that main issue and I didn't listen. Yeah. And, um, and it caused me to do so many different, like... Take different actions that have damaged your life now. Yeah, completely. Some and of which you're paying for. Yeah, now. S still paying for. Yeah. And, and it's... The, the, the thing is, like, I'm just trying to work out, is it because I have such an intense amount of fear around feeling that I keep having this you know, this suffering kind of pain. Yeah. The ma major cause of our suffering is our fear related to things that we could release, but we don't. Yeah, certainly. Um, if I can be more specific in your case, yeah. um, the, the issues that you face a, a lot surrounding um, women in particular mm -hmm. and your desire to please them and do things for them and compromising God's truth in the process. Now, of mm -hmm. course, there's quite a lot of laws you break in that process. And the law you break in that process is different depending on the circumstance. Right? So one moment you might break a law of, you know, with regard to feeding another person's addictions, which you want to do with women. Another time you break a law really get regarding you know, getting angry about something. You know, another time you make break another law, and they're all they all have different penalties, of course. These laws, mm. so of course, there's going to be a, a, you know different groups of penalties that occur. One of the things I feel the majority of people don't really contemplate, and that is, if I make a decision back here at this point in time, right, to to do a whole heap of things that are out of harmony with God's law. Obviously, what happens after that time, right, uh, are what I would classify as reaping the results of what you sowed here at that point in time, mm. right? And, and one of the things we need to come to understand, and this is something we will understand when we talk about law more, is that, is that we are going to, when we sow something, it has long-term consequences upon our pain and suffering, in fact. And this is one of the things we don't sort of think about very much, unfortunately. We, we sort of think that uh, I, I sowed that particular thing now, oh, now I'm aware that I did that, everything should be different now. But hang on a sec, if, if it was that easy to become aware, then, then when we haven't worked out the penalties associated with sowing that thing. We haven't worked out quite a lot of relationships between sowing this particular you know, thing that's out of harmony with love and the, the causal effects that that particular action has upon ourselves and other people's lives. You follow me? Yeah. And, and this is something that is worth spending a lot of time reflecting upon. Fab. And this is one of the reasons why you're a bit afraid to take further actions is because you're feeling like all these different things happen just from me doing one thing. Yeah, and it was it was one event, like one event that yes. I chose and I got all this suffering and then only recently I just said, okay, I've done all this stuff. I mean, I did one of So then there's also the feeling of, oh, I did the wrong thing. You know, that's yeah. part of the suffering. And then I was suffering. punishing myself for like six months to nearly a year. Just saying, like, oh, geez, I'm Yeah, not punishing not yourself obviously is not not. No, not so the I was going go. nowhere then, creating no. more pain. Yep. Yeah, you will. Sin. Because punishing yourself is actually an act of unloving behavior towards oneself. It's the same as punishing someone else, which is an act of unloving behavior towards another person. So punishing oneself is an act of unloving behaviour towards oneself. So of course it's going to have negative consequences. 
Yeah, then there was a, then there's an event that happened just recently that peaked so hard, the pain got so intense yeah. that I had to feel it. I couldn't yep. avoid and I keep doing that same thing. Like has to get so intense for me to get to feel it. Yep. And then I'll break down and surrender. Yep. And then yeah, after I felt a little bit of pleasure, but Yeah. So what what I would suggest is this. Look at the full consequences of everything that was sowed at the time. Mm. Like become sensitive to what this action and, and its full, full results. Does that make sense? Yeah. At the moment, you're trying to avoid its full results, avoid the, the, the consciousness of the full results. And even the punishing oneself is yeah. an attempt to avoid the full consequence of a result. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because we're, when we're punishing ourselves, we're not really looking at what's going on. Once you understand the full consequences, then you can go back to the original decision that was made and you can start to analyse it with a lot more truth and go, okay, firstly, what was the reason why I took that particular action? And if you, if we've already talked to you about some of the reasons why those particular actions were taken. And you can see there's a multitude of reasons, not just one. No, yeah, there's right, so there's quite a number of reasons. So in that regard, it was a good attraction event. To, to help expose a number of things, allow yourself to go back and look at what reasons were taken and then see that actually what I'm reaping now is the direct consequence of that choice. Now, the beauty of doing this, Fab, is that, is that you start seeing a relationship between what you sowed and what you were reaping. Once you see this relationship between these two, the next time it comes to making a similar decision, it's highly unlikely you'll make the same choice. Yeah, and are the, are the things that we reap similar to what we sow in the, in the sort of essence? They're always related to what we sow, yeah. certainly. Mm. Yeah, they're always related. So one of the things you were trying to avoid was, um, you know, you, you, you can list them. What, what were they? Oh, just I was desperate to be like have my daughter in my life. I didn't want to confront my ex. You didn't want to confront the truth with your ex. No, yeah, didn't want to confront the truth. I didn't want to be put into a place where I had to financially. I had all the financial fears about court cases and all that kind of stuff that mm -hmm. made me, you know, completely be unloving. And remember, I even talked to you about why you even wanted to have a court case. Exactly. Yeah, that uh, yeah. whole that was driven know, by a whole heap of emotions with your daughter. Yeah. Yep. Um, desire to have her love me in my life. Well, desire to have her in your life because yeah. whether she's in your life or not, she's still capable of loving you. But what has been the net result of many of these? Well, Does she love you more now than before? No, she doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah. And, and, and your compromise, did it actually work out? No. No. It and she made my life a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, you found you injured uh, friendships. Through uh, the compromise? I don't have any friends, really. Yeah. So you in your friendship through I mean, the compromise? That's not true. I have some friends. I feel you do. Yeah. yeah but, but, but in that kind of world there, yeah. which is probably a good thing because I got to see the truth. But yeah. Yeah. It's so, so this is the thing is once you start seeing the relationship, you can go back to the event and start looking at, okay, what reasons did I make these choices for? And now the outcome is that all of the things that I thought I was making these choices for have actually now happened, even though I did the wrong thing from exactly, God's perspective. Yeah. So this is an indication, this gives me a great example of, okay, I did what I thought was right. All the things I was trying to avoid in my addictions are now actually happening. So I didn't avoid them either. So, so there's a lot of learning lessons that you can learn from that particular experience. Yeah. And my suggestion is allow yourself to learn them. Yeah, and is that you can release those things just like releasing any other emotion. yeah well you need to allow the law of compensation does its work fab and this is one thing that most people do not grasp and that is when you take an action that's out of harmony with love there is going to be a law of compensation no matter what you choose to do after that point the only way you can avoid the law of compensation is to engage the law of repentance and you're not doing that yeah, don't know what it so is. so yeah so 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 you're going to engage the law of compensation for how long that takes until you either repent or which is about going back to the original decision and yeah. working out why uh, that's a part of the repentance process or until the law of compensation finishes its work 
It might take 10 years, it might take 20 years, whatever. Yeah. Right? My suggestion is to engage the <laughs> repentance process, but, but we resist repentance quite significantly. One of the reasons why we've done this pain-pleasure conversation with you is because we, wa we wanted to introduce the concepts of, of law, sin, and the process of like, how to undo sin. And all of those things are future discussions we want to have you. We need to spend, like, like I said, 30 hours of each on, on those particular subjects because we want to help you understand them. But it's a great example, I feel, of taking an action, thinking you're doing things your you know you're doing things your way really but knowing that i wasn't doing the right thing then anyway really well at the, at part of you knew yeah but part of you also believed that it was the best course of action exactly, you know yeah. practical world yeah, practical, and all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you believe the best course of action but see you know god's laws run the world like <laughs> not 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 human law so of course the result's going to be more like i uh, to be honest with you i could have predicted almost everything that's happened to you since mm. Yeah, and, and in fact, I did with my discussions with my with with Mary. Yeah, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And eventually, Fab will realise that the decision he made was wrong, and then he's going to feel the regret of the decision yeah, as but, well. But the thing is, like, how can I get to a point? Say we come back in four months' time for the next one. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have at least moved some of what is going on there. If you want to study the law of forgiveness and repentance, okay, that's where it is to go. Now, honestly, for any of you, if you want to start addressing these issues of sin now, then repentance is your key. Okay. Forgiveness and repentance. Forgiveness of others, repentance of, for, you know, towards others. Yep. That's the key. Without, that, that is the secret to you receiving God's love. It's the secret to a rapid release of sin. It's the secret to your growth, in fact. And that's, you know, that's why we're going to spend some time on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yes, understand it. Now, I've already presented a lot of material about that mm, particular yeah. subject, so go over it. Yeah, right. have, a, have, a look at, have a look at it. We're going to summarise a lot of it in future presentations, but that's the thing to look at. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Repentance and forgiveness, key for dealing with sin. My, my, that's my suggestion. You can do the law of compensation if you want. Many of you are, but but honestly, it's a very slow, laborious, and painful process. Yeah, of course, the repentance and forgiveness is a intensely painful process. But it's like your splinter demonstration. Correct. Yeah, exactly the same as that. Yeah, yeah, very tense, but very fast. Mm. Pain over. Move on. Yeah, yeah. Same that's same. where you, that's what you want to do. Yep. Okay, well, one question, one more question. Um, Deidre, thanks. <coughs> Hi, I think I've just had a bit of a light bulb moment. Um, right, I'm they're the always good, aren't they? Yeah, I've been in chronic, well, I'm not actually in chronic pain at the moment, but I have been for like about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember making this conviction to myself, I will never let, I will never cry over a man again. And it's like, that's the sin that's caused my chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And it's only because I've met Glenn and I'm, well, attempting <laughs> to well, have no, a Well, no, you prefer getting angry with Glenn than crying. Yeah, cry. correct, correct. Yeah. But the chronic pain has stopped since I've been, well, kind of in a relationship with him, I should say. I'm not there yet. Yeah. But it's like that was my sin without that conviction like you said i had the refusal it's refusal to cry over the yeah pain yeah the you've got it. quite a few refusals in oh your i'm head. just yeah before i came here i was really like i really refuse yeah, yeah you do yeah and uh it's a common thing of course you know that we get into these states of refusal but not understanding the pain in our body that it actually finishes up causing yeah it's just yeah Thank you. I just thank you. It's like great. <laughs> yeah, knowing the relationship, like I feel, if the majority of you could see the true causes of the compensatory pain, you you would you, you would probably be less inclined to avoid the poor decision making process that you often go through in terms of the decisions that you make out of harmony with love. But see, m many of you are not sensitive enough to that pain 
or can no, not see the relationship because you're already in so much pain emotionally and otherwise that you once once you're in a lot of pain you know, it's very hard to be sensitive to one of them it's just a global thing then you know like or and and particularly emotionally it's very hard to be sensitive to the nuances of what caused this particular pain what caused this particular emotional pain this is why this is so important, this section, in understanding the relationship and understanding, again, that this is about the exercise of your will. You can choose differently, but are you going to? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Are you going to choose differently? Well, that really depends on, again, you. Nobody else. There's plenty of external influences trying to help you choose more a more loving course of action and the fact that you're not is all to do with your own issues not anybody else's does that make sense there's also a lot of external influences in the world that are trying to get you to go along with the world's viewpoint too and whether you respond to those particular influences or not again is an exercise of your will so you can see how important developing your will is, isn't it? Like to really take firm responsibility for every choice and decision you make and understand its consequence. Like it's no good taking firm responsibility if you don't understand the consequence of each one either. It's better to understand the consequence, make firm decisions and choices and not allow your will to be easily influenced by others unless those others are demonstrably in a better emotional condition of love than you yourself are so what i see many of you doing is discussing with each other oh what would you do oh that's a good idea and yet the person you're listening to doesn't even do what they're saying to you right or the person you're talking to you know doesn't even think that what they're saying to you is even true and you don't even know it because you can't feel them well enough to know it right you're listening to people frequently listening to people who you can't trust and you frequently avoid people and spirits whom you can trust. Right? Now, to me, there are all things that can change, but it's going to, again, require you to exercise your will to change them. Like, I see many of you getting very influenced by people who are in a negative condition to do what they think you should do and because it appeals to some emotion or some addiction with inside of you you go ahead and make these choices only to find that the outcome is not what you expected and many of you then blame it on some kind of theory of divine truth after that as well which I find is very negative because at the end of the day you're not practicing God's truth you're not even exercising your own will to take responsibility for it so how can you expect anything good to come from that? What I love about exercising my will is that I can exercise my will. I measure the consequence. If the consequence is negative, I know it was my fault. It was the exercise of my will. I did that. And, and that's a good thing to know that because that's called a mistake. And mistakes are okay, right? We're allowed to make them. So we correct the mistake. And when something good comes from what I do, I go, well, that's my fault too. Isn't that wonderful? I did something, I chose to do something, and the outcome was fantastic, and that's because of the way I exercised my will in a loving way. And don't you think that helps your worth and it helps you to feel like you're more connected with... Well, of course you are more connected with God, but you feel more connected with God, more connected with yourself. There's a lot of positive results that come from that. Does that make sense? All right, well, um, we'll finish our discussion there. Tomorrow what we're going to do is focus a little bit more attention on the development of our will and we're going to go back to some things about developing our will muscle and some of the basic principles of how we can do that, how we can build our you know, will and, and that's what we really want to take home with us to carry through and follow through on that particular issue because we, we would like to see, uh, you know, each time with one of these groups, we'd like to see 70 independent, free-thinking people who are not influenced by the world around them and they only influenced by love, truth and, and their relationship with God into making choices and decisions that are going to help them and help the world and generate happiness and generate pleasure. <laughs> that's what we... That's what we yeah. 
But, but if you keep, keep doing something like the, what you have been doing, that's not going to probably be possible, right? So something has to change, and you are responsible for the change because God's already doing everything God can possibly do to help you change. Our spirit friends, our celestial spirit friends, and other spirits who are trying to help you are already doing as much as they possibly can to help you change. So it's very, very important that you see your personal responsibility to take some action and to make decisions and change your choices and, and to see the effects of your choices and measure the effects of your choices in your life if you're really going to ha experience a growth in your will to love and a growth in your will to change. All right. All right, so what we'll do tomorrow is it's a, it's a four-hour presentations tomorrow. We're going to examine your... Firstly, you know, how to build the will. And then secondly, we're going to examine the rewards of developing your will because there's so many and most of you like don't realise how many there are, otherwise you'd probably want to do it more. And so we need to go through that. We'll have a final Q&A, uh, which will be about the entire group rather than just one particular talk. And then uh, in, in the last talk, we'll be discussing with you, we'll be sending you out into the world <laughs> with your highly developed sense of uh, desiring a loving will. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, and maybe I shouldn't hope too much, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy that. And then, then, we'll, then it's our last, our last night, obviously, our last day. And, uh, and we'll have to say goodbye to you for this week after that. So it's gone for past pretty quick, hasn't it? Yeah. Yep. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed most of the material you've received so far. And, uh, oh, by the way, I had to say to you too, Mary, I, I talked to Mary this morning and, and she wanted me to give you her love and, and, and say that she hopes you're enjoying the program. So I just wanted to relate, relay that to you. So, But, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have an enjoyable day tomorrow and work our way through developing this immense wheel. Right? <laughs> immense <laughs> Will. <laughs> Thanks, guys.